I woke up from a coma in jail and pregnant. Imagine waking up with no recollection of what happened to you, pregnant and locked up in jail. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly the situation I found myself in three years ago, and only now I'm really able to put all the pieces fully together. I'm Sandy, and if I had followed my gut instinct instead of being blinded by despair, I wouldn't have found myself in that big mess. Honestly, the odds were against me since I was a young girl. You see, I was born in a really bad neighborhood, to a kind of messed up family. Mom wasn't responsible at all, and she cared more about gambling or drinking than taking care of me. Dad? Well, Dad was there a few weeks and then left for a few months. But before we move on, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and activate the notification bell. This will let you live 20 amazing years longer. Trust me, it works! And can you believe that my father actually expected me to be super happy to see him whenever he walked back into our house? But when I became a teenager and saw that he was a deadbeat father, I began to ignore him whenever he was home. That made him super angry because apparently he believed that those few moments of responsibility made up for abandoning us constantly. See, my mom was just 15 when she got pregnant with me. And though my grandparents helped her raise me, they weren't the best people in the world either. They didn't really care if I studied or if I slacked off. And they let me hang out with the wrong crowds. Granddad even went to jail a few times while I was growing up, so it was all a big mess. My uncle and cousins weren't any better either, if you were wondering. As I said, I didn't have the most incredible childhood. I went to public schools, and kids there could be a real mess. Teachers didn't seem to even care. Sure, there were a few good apples. They were really hard to come across. When I turned 16, Dad finally went away for good. Not by his own choice, though. He got caught robbing a bank and was sentenced to 15 years in jail. You can bet that I never, ever went to go visit him. Mom completely gave up on me after that too worried about getting a new husband to take care of her teenage daughter. So in order to survive, I was forced to do some really illegal things. Yeah, I stole and I got into trouble often, but I knew how to weasel myself out of just about any situation. A few years later, I met this amazing guy, Tyler. Oh, Tyler was a lifesaver. He showed me that life could be good if I worked hard and that I didn't have to be a criminal like my dad was. I didn't have to be a slacker like my dad either. He did well at school and was hardworking. I was fascinated by him. And we began dating, everything seemed to click. I knew that I had to change my life for the best and he helped me get a great job. A few months into our relationship, we decided that we needed a real change. We needed to get out of the area that I'd grown up in and all the mistakes I'd made. Also, keep a few thousand miles between my family and I because my mom kept asking to borrow money from the moment she found I had a job. So Tyler and I moved across the country to another state. We got a nice little apartment and began our life anew. No one knew us there and no one had heard about my family's crimes and reputation. That was such a relief. I could start fresh and that was what I was going to do. Things went amazing for us for the longest time. We got married, we found nice jobs, we enjoyed a normal peaceful routine. We even managed to move into a bigger house, and we were speaking about beginning a family as well. I worked as a cashier at a local supermarket, and Tyler, who had gotten a higher education than I had, got a job as the manager of the same location. It was great because I could spend extra time with my hubby and learn from him. One day, maybe he would get himself a better job, and I could become the manager. It was a nice dream, but the bubble was about to burst. One night, someone knocked on our front door, and much to my shock, I opened it only to find Tank standing there. Who is Tank, you might ask? Oh boy, Tank was trouble. I had been super close to this guy growing up. He was a career criminal, and he was the one to teach me how to pickpocket without being caught. I was stunned to see him there with a bag in his hand. Tank was always up to no good, so I knew this wasn't just a social visit. I tried to tell him it was best if he left, but he called in a favor. You owe me, Sandy, he told me, reminding me of the time that he had helped me run away from the police years back. If it hadn't been for him, I would have spent some time in jail. And I knew that. I need you to help me, he said. I sighed and allowed him inside. I wasn't too happy about it, but I couldn't turn my back on the guy who had saved me all those years ago. 
He explained that he was down on his luck and he just needed a place to crash until he could get back on his feet. Tyler wasn't happy about it, but since I pleaded with him, he reluctantly agreed to let Tank stay, for a week at the most. Tank seemed super grateful and I wished he would leave as soon as humanly possible. The second night he spent there, he began speaking about this scam he was working on. He tried to get us in on it, but of course we refused. He seemed okay with it, but now I know he wasn't. Look, I didn't know this at the time, but I do now. Tank wanted us to help him in his scam, and when we refused, he decided he was going to put us in a position that left us unable to refuse. Since we had jobs and were doing good for ourselves, that meant finding a way to have us fired. We weren't aware of the threatening calls he began making to the store, but it completely freaked the owners. They decided it was best to simply let us go and be done with the whole mess. I was told about it many years later when I was finally released from prison. All of a sudden, my husband and I got fired from the supermarket. We couldn't believe it. We tried to ask why this was happening, but the owners refused to let us know any reason. They just said that we needed to leave right away. We were freaking out, of course, and returned home super bummed. How are we going to pay for the mortgage and for our bills or the credit card? Tank was there sitting on the sofa just relaxing, and we told him all about what had happened. We couldn't possibly know that he had been behind it all. He looked so worried, and he told us he was very sorry. At first, we still refused to speak about the scam he had going on, but after a while, we began to really grow concerned. We needed to make some quick money because the job market was so hard, and it would take us some time to get something new. So we asked him what he had in mind, and he replied, Well, I have a way you can make a quick five grand, each. We were stunned. That was so much money. We asked what we would have to do to earn that kind of money, and he just shrugged. The less you know, the better for you guys. So just trust me, it'll be worth it when you don't have to be pinching every penny to survive. We reluctantly agreed, but weren't happy about it at all. Believe me, I didn't want to go back to my old ways. It was insane to find myself in that situation, but I figured it would be just that one time, and that would be it. The problem was, one time turned into two, and two into three. He kept dragging us into these messed up plans. I later discovered exactly what he had tangled us up in. Apparently, he had found a clever way to get people's hard-earned money. He would tell them he had something valuable to sell, mostly over the internet. You know, in those ads on Craigslist and those kinds of websites. It all looked super legit. He made sure it did. And then he would ask them to meet up with him. But when he was counting the money, he would take off without handing the victim the valuable product. I was the getaway driver, and my husband found ways to distract the victim until it was too late to react. Yeah, messed up, I know. I wouldn't have done any of it, but I was really desperate. I figured in a few weeks, I'd get a new job, and I could finally quit this messed up activity for good. During that last hit, though, something went terribly wrong. I tried to rush off the scene with a car we were using, which I was certain was stolen and Tank screamed at me to run a red light to get away scot-free. I did, reluctantly, and then everything went black. A car had hit the side of our vehicle, and I can't remember a thing after that. All I know is that I woke up strapped to a hospital bed, and everything hurt. I looked around in shock. The place didn't look like a regular hospital room, and much to my shock, my stomach was swollen and large. I had to be at least six months pregnant. A doctor stepped in and calmed me down. He explained to me that I and the guys I was driving away from a crime scene had gotten into a terrible accident. I was put in a medically induced coma due to health risks. And soon, the doctors realized I was pregnant. Apparently, at the time of the accident, I was only two or three weeks along. It was a complete miracle that I didn't lose the baby in the car crash. The doctors had to take really good care of me, especially once they realized I was pregnant. If they gave me too many meds, that could affect the baby. So they had to be super careful about every decision they took. I didn't recover my memory all at once. It took me such a long time and so much effort as well. I had to work weekly with a therapist, and it was really traumatic. Believe me when I say I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe I had lost six months of my pregnancy, my freedom, and my husband all at once. Sure, Tyler was still alive, but we wouldn't be able to see each other for years. Everything was a complete mess, and I'd have to stay in jail for at least five years. My husband was sentenced to eight years in prison, 
Don't ask me why they were harsher on him. Maybe they felt bad for me since I was preggers. You might be asking yourself what happened to Tank. Since he had a lot of criminal records, he would be staying over a decade behind bars. Guess what he said when he was sentenced? I was framed! It was all Tyler and Sandy's fault! Yeah, he actually did say that. Crazy, right? When I delivered my baby, I had a really hard decision to make. I didn't want to give her up, of course. I loved her so much, even if I only got to hold her in my arms for a few minutes. I realized the best thing I could do for my daughter was to let a good family adopt her. If not, she'd end up living with my mom until I was released. And that was the worst possible outcome. She would be raised by a horrible, irresponsible grandmother. I convinced my husband to sign the adoption papers as well. It was one of the few times a judge allowed us to have contact while we were in jail. Honestly, I don't think I've ever cried harder. All I asked before agreeing to the adoption was for the family to keep me updated about her. Once a year, they send me a letter without any private information, but telling me that she's healthy and that kind of stuff. I know that I should never have listened to Tank, or even have allowed him to walk into my home. Due to good behavior, I was released early, after only serving three years of my sentence. My husband was given a parole two years after that. I waited for him dutifully. He was the love of my life. How could I just abandon him? We moved away from the state and even changed our names so that no one we used to know can never find us again. We are trying to get pregnant, as we want to have a kid we can actually keep. I really hope my firstborn is happy with their new parents. So far, every update has been good news. It's heartbreaking, but I can't take her away from the people she believes are her real parents. If she ever wants to contact me after turning 18, I'll be more than happy to let her into my life. Thanks for watching. What's the worst someone you knew did that landed them in jail? Let us know in the comments. Please don't forget to subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel.